discussing something that is extremely, extremely important. We're discussing our right as citizens to express ourselves, and I'm very happy that uh, the chairperson of the uh, Women in Parliament Caucus, Honorable Kanduluo, felt it fit that she needed to make a comment on an issue that is quite live at the moment, and that is uh, some of the postings that uh, we have seen on social media. As government, we want to make it very clear that the right of expression is uh, captured in the Constitution. And that right is also guided by other laws, including uh, defamation and libel. And obviously, even on a personal level, at a family level, we expect a responsibility. This also extends to the uh, right of uh, the press, that uh, while the media has the right to publish, they must also publish uh, what is factual, they have to publish uh, within the national laws, and that failure to do that, then we see uh, incidences where the police actually charge people with uh, uh, criminal uh, libel. Now, as government, and uh, in particular His Excellency President Edgar Lungu, he is not afraid of any argument from anyone as he expends uh, his duties. He's very happy to take criticism. The President of the Republic of Zambia, President Edgar Chabalungu, is very happy to engage in any debate, in any argument. However, that must be palatable. And I think it is unbecoming, and uh, we need to begin to question ourselves when young people go on social media posting insults about the president. We have to begin to ask, is it a failure of the family? Is it a failure of the education system? Uh, because uh, you don't go down the road insulting people. People will say you are mad. So clearly, if you're going to hide behind your computer on your phone and begin to post insults about the president, as we saw over the weekend, the young lady in the diaspora, then we need to begin to question, what kind of people are these? What has happened? And maybe Honorable Kanduluo, who's been in the education system for a long time and is a medical field and is part and parcel of creating laws, especially uh, national guidance, governance, good value laws. Maybe you can shed a bit more light, but I do know that you want to make a statement on a very particular post on social media, so please go ahead. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister, for the information and broadcasting. I think for me, particularly as a woman, I feel extremely sad, and in my address, I want to address particular uh, groups of people. First of all, I want to start by addressing parents, because all of us, regardless of who we are, we are born of a, out of a, a family, a unity of two people, a father and a mother. And if I look back when we were growing ourselves, to insult elders was taboo. But as I stand, I sit here today, it's become so fashionable to insult. And uh, sometimes when these uh, young people are insulting, they are doing it in the full view of the elders. And I've always been wondering that uh, when you stand as a mother or as a father and you watch these young people insult, don't you realize that they're actually insulting you? These young people that are insulting women, it doesn't matter which woman they're insulting, they are actually insulting their own mothers. So where is the family fabric? Where has it gone? And some of the critical people that are part of the, putting together the social fabric of any nation are not only parents, but also the churches. So where are the churches in all this in terms of rekindling our social fabric as a people? Another very important group that is very critical in all what we do is the civil society. And I know that there are certain organizations in this country whose sole agenda is looking at gender-based violence. Some of them, their sole agenda is looking at uh, laws. I, what comes to mind right now is WUSA. How are we gonna work together and put in place laws that are going to curb this uh, abuse and this cyberbullying that is going on, especially targeting women? As a person, I have nothing, I, I'm not against anybody criticizing me in terms of my portfolio as Minister of uh, Fisheries and Livestock. 
When I was Minister of Higher Education, I had not, there was nothing wrong in criticizing me in my course of duty. But I have every reason to be upset if someone enters my house and starts insulting me. And that is what's happening. Now, uh, what is also sad in Zambia is that we are saying we are doing this because we have rights. And this whole right issue is what has brought Zambia to its knees right now in terms of how we relate with the, with the, with the genders, how we relate with adults and so on. The question is, where does everybody's right end? What makes one think that they have the right to insult a, a, a minister, they have a right to insult a member of parliament, they have the right to insult their elders? How about the rights of those people they are insulting? So really, Zambia needs to unpack this whole issue of rights. And here I would like to address the Human Rights Commission. I think the Human Rights Commission has an obligation to this country to start really unpacking this whole issue of rights and start guiding this country on where does everybody's rights end. Because we just can't be going around, I stand in the middle of Cairo Road, I start insulting people because it's my right. Because even that person you're insulting also has rights. And therefore, we need to start knowing where our rights end. And really, as uh, Oribo Slea said, where is our education? Because an educated person cannot do that. And I recall when I used to be Minister of Higher Education, I said, the tragedy is that maybe what we have are schooled people. We are all walking around with certificates in our handbags, our briefcases, our an educated person cannot do the kind of things that we see. Even those that are in the diaspora who think they know more than those of us who are sitting in Zambia, if indeed you are getting the right education out there, you cannot do the kind of things that you are doing. The postings that we see on some of our social media, where in fact I, I recall somebody even insulting my, my spectacles. <laughs> Is that, I mean, I looked at that and I was really mesmerized how somebody can even insult my spectacles. What have the spectacles done? So I think that uh, the movement right now that is in Zambia, the Women 2020, I think that we need to harness it because it is on the right path. We need to include more women in decision making, more women in parliament, more women in councils. Because maybe as women, we will try and drive the country back to where it should be in terms of driving our social fabric. I would like to see in this sitting that we as the Women Parliamentary Caucus sponsor a private member's motion that will talk about this cyber security, this cyber bullying. I think we need to really start putting laws in place that are going to deal with this. Otherwise, we are gone as a country. We can't. Zambia was a very respected country until this social media came. And this abuse of social media must come to an end. And as the, the Women Parliamentary Caucus sponsors the private members' motion on aging, us to put laws in place that will deal with uh, cyberbullying, I hope our colleague, the Minister of uh, Transport and Communications, whose agenda and um, his brief is to ensure that we have laws and systems that protect the citizen of Zambia in terms of how the social media is used, will we'll embrace some of the, the arguments that we shall put on the floor. And I hope my colleague, the Minister of National Guidance, whose brief is really to start bringing back our social fabric the way we socialize our children as they grow up. What happens in our schools? What should go in our curriculum in t from the grade one, in fact, from early education to the time people get to university and colleges? I, I hope we shall work together and start addressing this cyber bully, this gender-based balance. And sometimes I've wondered, uh, we have so many female lawyers in, in, in this country. And there's a lot of discourse going on things that are not really the cause for women. And yet we have so much that we need to say this is a cause for women. So how do we come together? The law, female lawyers, the civil society, we in parliament and everybody, and address ourselves to this issue. 
Let me just conclude by saying to my women colleagues out there that if they are insulting Kanduluo from her spectacles to her toes, they are also insulting yourself. So this is a cause that we women might come together and as the vision, women vision 2020 um, moves on into the future, I think this is a cause they should take on and ensure that we bring cyber bullying in relation to women and girls to an end. At one point, I was happy that I was seeing less uh, pages in newspapers where they would bring girls dancing and they are, they are showing their pants and everything. I thought, my God, since there are fewer pages, maybe we are getting there. Then came social media. Then the insults shifted from uh, the central page of uh, the newspapers. Now it's all rife in the social media. So let me conclude by calling on our young people to desist from uh, this, this uh, um, agenda of insulting their mothers. Any woman walking on the streets of Zambia is your mother. That's why when we were growing, we had no aunties. We only had mothers. My mother's sisters were my mothers. Neighbors in the village or the community I lived were my mothers. And I think maybe we should start interrogating all these things we are learning from outside. Auntie, 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 auntie. There is no auntie, auntie. There's just mother, mother. And maybe when we come to terms that every woman you see is your mother, then you'll probably give them more respect than we are doing. And let me also speak to the media. Media fraternity. Maybe you women who have found yourselves in the media fraternity should stop even publishing some of these stories that come to your table and just say, look, I'm a woman. So if they are writing this about uh, Kandulu, they are writing this about Doris Lear, they are writing this about uh, uh, Mrs. Mukoko, it's as good as writing about me. I was reading some of the insults they were insulting Honorable Mukoko. I almost died. You can't. It's unacceptable and it should be brought to an end. And let us all women of Zambia join hands regardless of who you are, whether you're in the political sphere, you're in civil society, you're in what, and just speak to this issue. Because before we know it, we'll all be part of this uh, going down because of social media. And uh, we have the fast track courts and I hope uh, when the, the female judges will be judging in those fast track courts, they will make sure that uh, those that have been taken to the to be reported for doing things like this will be given the appropriate uh, punishment. Yesterday Thank was you. Father's Day, so even male judges. <laughs> okay, then, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. yes. Uh, in fact, I think this is an opportune time to speak about this since people were celebrating Father's Day. And I didn't see any father caning their sons for and daughters for insulting women. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Kanduluo, who is the chair of the Women Parliamentarian Caucus, uh, talking to us about her plan to encourage uh, more and more uh, laws to be brought uh, to Parliament, bills to be brought to Parliament. Uh, to ensure that uh, we manage uh, cyberbullying because we are aware there are a lot of even young people, ordinary citizens. It's not just the Dora Celia or the Nkanduluos or President Lungu. There are many ordinary citizens, especially young girls, who are being abused uh, on uh, social media and they don't know where to go. They don't know how to go about it. And the Honorable Nkandulu is saying that they want to make it as clear as possible so that any citizen who is abused on social media should know what to do and should believe and have confidence that there will be fast track courts to make sure that uh, they get uh, their recourse. I think that was uh, the main message uh, from uh, the minister here. I will take some questions very quickly before we leave. First question. First question. Yes, please. Oh, yes. yes um, good morning. Good morning. Yes. Um, the question is, Honorable uh, Kandulu, we've talked about many statements uh, that we need to unpack 
this human rights issue. What do you really mean? Okay, maybe explain further. And then uh, the second question is, uh, we've talked about having proposing a private member's motion bill. What would be the contents of this bill to ensure that uh, cyberbullying is really dealt with? Thank you. Okay. So human rights. Well, I, 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 why I'm saying that we need to unpack the issue of human rights is I think in Zambia, human rights have been abused. And people think human rights or freedom of expression is to insult anybody you see, you start insulting them. That is not human rights. And the, the institutions that have been uh, detailed to deal with human rights must start explaining to the Zambian people the meaning of human rights and where each human being's rights end. Because children have child rights. Women do have women's rights. Men have men's rights. And therefore, you, you can't just think that because you are a man, you can get up and insult a woman. And you just can't get up and think because you are an adult, you should insult children. I think we need to start now guiding the country on these issues of human rights. Because these are things that have just come into this country and everybody is saying, you know, we have rights, we have rights. It doesn't mean that anybody has any more rights than the other person. There's nowhere where they say men have more rights than women or children have less rights than adults. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And we have institutions in Zambia, such as the Human Rights Commission, whose part of their agenda is to start guiding this country on issues of rights. I think they are being abused and we must bring it to an end. The and the bill. issue of uh, the, what do the women want to see in the yeah, bill in parliament? Yeah. What we want to see is how laws will now be crafted around social media use. In other countries, they have actually put laws so that uh, those people that are abusing the social media are dealt with accordingly. But in Zambia, it's free for all. And the other people, who, in fact, most of the people that go to insult on social media, I would call them cowards. Because if you have an issue with uh, myself, why not just put, pick up a phone call and say, Professor Lua, I would like to come to your office to come and have a discussion on this issue. Because many times you find that those that even post things, it's, they do them from ignorance. If in fact they took time to go and speak to the person, they'll find that they, they didn't, the what they were talking about, they didn't even know anything. So I think we need to have laws that start curtailing some of these people who are abusing uh, the systems that have been set up. Social media is supposed to be where you discuss things intellectually. And if you have some good ideas that you want to bounce to friends, you bounce them so that you have some kind of debate. But they are not meant for you to get there and start insulting people who you are probably scared of going to face head on. Then you take them to the social media. So we, we are not using the social media properly in this country. There's so much to talk about in this country. A lot of young people have met have such good ideas that if they bounce them on social media, their friends can read about them, they can interrogate, they can have a discourse, and maybe come up with a plan that can be presented to the, the, the powers that be and say, how about, about this? But you, you find that uh, those that have absolutely no ideas are the ones that are finding themselves into the social media so that they use now the social media for what they do. In fact, the British say an empty team makes a lot of noise. Next question. Yes, yes, my lady there. Sorry, I didn't see you. Okay. My name is Pamela Mlemba, a freelancer journalist. My question is riding on what my, my colleague asked. I'm, I'm, I'm quite interested to know how agents we are going to, to bring this progressive uh, Muslim parliament and then looking at how uh, cyber bullying has been especially with uh, against women do you think that we be as Zambian government we are going to attend the static process of 50 50 women's representation in parliament okay. in fact uh, this uh, private members motion was supposed to have been brought in the last sitting of parliament but as you know, because of the COVID-19, 
we 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 stopped the the parliamentary sitting, and there were people who were already researching uh, on the bringing this private member's motion. And my my we are just going to continue now and make sure that during this sitting, this motion is brought to the sitting of the house. So it's it's urgent, and we've been thinking about it since last year, and we've been researching so that uh, the people that will move this private member's motion bring certain facts to the table. Because you just can't start talking from without. You need to have certain facts on the table. And uh, so that's, uh, that's how urgent it is. Mm -hmm. And, it's, and uh, in terms of SADC uh, protocol, I'm sure you've been following some of the women that have been going all over talking about, uh, they are called the Women Vision 2020. This is because when people have been debating the Bill 10, they, they are really not even looking article by article. In that Bill 10, there is an article that will make it possible for us to attain the standard protocol of 50-50. That is Article 47, number two, because it is actually putting in place a system of elections that will ensure that uh, women are brought into, uh, into uh, council, they are brought into parliament, but also in other positions of decision making. It is actually in Bill 10, Article 47, number two. Go and read it. Because it also provides, it will also provide for how the laws will be now crafted that will make it possible for the women to achieve that 50-50. For example, in some countries like Britain, they have what is called the safe seats. So there are certain seats that are reserved specifically for women to compete. In, uh, and in other countries, they do what is called group campaign. Then when they start allocating, the, like South Africa, when they start allocating seats, they make sure that 50% of the seats are given to women and 50% are given to men. This is how Rwanda, uh, South Africa, Uganda has actually got a good number of women. And the, the president of this republic, Mr. Edgar Shagwalungu, in his quest to improve uh, the, 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 you know, the 50-50 the uh, representation, has agreed in the Bill 10 to ensure that the Article 47.2 is part of the Bill 10. Mm -hmm. And all those that are speaking against Bill 10 are actually denying you women the opportunity to participate. And the youth. And the, and the youth and the people living with disabilities. Yes, please. Um, I've taken note of the fact that uh, there are a lot of women being bullied. Um, unfortunately, not only politicians, but even just any woman who is, you know, risen above the bar and done anything meaningful with their life, be it in the media and, and, and musicians and so on and so forth. Um, but unfortunately, the barrier has been um, the fact that the first core of points is the police, we report, mm -hmm. and then these matters are not taken seriously. And this is why we feel they are not coming to an end. Mm -hmm. uh, how will you ensure that the police service also rise uh, to the occasion and ensure that they are touched with seriousness these cases uh, deserve? First of all, I think from government point of view, uh, we have been very concerned, just like yourself. Uh, the bullying of women just seems to be very easy, you know, calling women prostitutes, calling women this. That seems to be a very easy way to sort of finish women in this country. Even a highly educated woman, such as Professor Nkandulu, and it is extremely shameful. And this is why Honorable Uwe here is saying they would like the women parliamentarians to take to parliament a bill that should ensure that there is fast tracking of these cases. Because if you post something on the internet, there lies the evidence. So it should be very fast that once a person complains, the process should be quick enough, including up to the judges. So in terms of uh, 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 awareness, the citizens themselves must be aware and know that they have to report these cases to the police. Number two, that even the police service itself must be alive and aware to how the citizens are being injured over this matter. And then, of course, even the court processes, the judiciary, must also be aware of how injured citizens feel about this matter. And I think this is one of the things Honorable Gandilou is doing here today, to remind all of us, because first it's the citizens who is injured, the rights of that citizen. When you're sitting behind your phone or your computer, 
it's not just your rights that are the, the, the ultimate, as Honorable Lou uh, says here. You are injuring the rights of other people. Make no mistake, government is not saying you don't have a right to engage with the internet. Everybody has that right. But as we do, just like when we're engaging at a place of work or at school or at parliament, you don't go about insulting your colleagues in the corridors. If you have an issue with your colleagues you work with, you say, look, I think if we did this or we did that, it would be better. You don't go about insulting them. So why should you go about insulting them when you are hiding? That's why Honorable Kandurua says they must be cowards. So we have a lot of work to do, all of us. Currently, there are sufficient laws. There are laws, laws of libel, laws of defamation in the penal code. Uh, we have already seen cases where people have been arrested and the police have charged them with criminal libel. But we are saying, I think what Honorable Lua is saying on behalf of the women, is that uh, this should not be specifically for, oh, it's that person or it's that person. Each Zambian, and not just women, each Zambian who is being abused or injured on the internet, even young people, they must feel and have confidence that they can report a case and it will be properly prosecuted and get to its logical conclusion. Can we take two last questions if it's possible? Any more questions? Can we get two last ones? The men are not asking questions. Oh, he did. He was the first one. Yes, please. Any questions? Let, let, let me just end then by, by truly emphasizing here that the Ministry of Transport and Communication has been working on a number of laws, the cyber laws, laws on uh, privacy, laws on uh, financial transactions, laws on uh, security. I think the difference uh, uh, that uh, Honorable Luo is uh, talking about here, as I've said already, is to kind of just isolate issues of cyber bullying and cyber bullying against women, against any citizens and that it must include that process an awareness campaign that citizens should not just uh, be hiding and crying because I do know that a lot of my colleagues women in the media new female musicians just ordinary citizens are quite abused and uh, they feel that uh, something must be done number two as I said in the beginning President Lungu is not afraid of any argument. In fact, many of us are not afraid of any argument. We can debate the whole day. After all, that's why we are parliamentarians. President Lungu is not afraid of any debate. But government will not stand by and allow people who probably have nothing much to offer in their sadness and insult the president and call it freedom of expression. For those that need some education on freedom of expression, they can come to you, the media. Freedom of expression, freedom of the press, which this government will defend any day. But let's separate that from those who are pedestrian and have nothing better to offer and engage and wish to believe that in some the president makes them fashionable and that that is freedom of expression or freedom of the press. We live in a Zambia with a very specific culture a Zambia with a very specific political context, a Zambia where we say we are a Christian nation, a Zambia where recently the Global Peace Index voted us number four in Africa as the most peaceful country. Peace must come with some responsibility. It must come with some sort of behavior. Now, how can we be a country where other people want to believe that we are so peaceful? And yet all we want to do is post on the internet insulting our president, insulting ministers, insulting women, then there'll be total failure as a country. I think we owe it to ourselves, all of us, we owe it to ourselves to say, if we have a disagreement, an argument, we don't like what the president is doing. There are many ways young people can express themselves and sound intelligent so that when we read, even we in government will be saying, wow, this person really has some, uh, you know, cerebral, some real mental capacity. We don't want to read and really wonder that what kind of school did this person go to. So I think that is the whole purpose of this uh, press brief today. It's just to emphasize that government is not going to tolerate at all insulting of government officials, insulting of the president, of the vice president, insulting of Zambian citizens. And we want Zambian citizens from today to believe that if you make a complaint to the police, the police is actually going to address that matter. So those who want to believe that they'll make it their 
purpose to insult others. They should be very, very afraid. Thank you so much. <laughs>